What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we are going to be looking at the top 10 rares in rage Eye legends and this list was surprisingly hard to come up with um i counted at least 17 beasts um that you guys could use but you know let me know in the comments below who you think i've missed off this tier list um and the way that i've done this is you know i've gone for champions that are either god tier in like one specific area or absolute beasts across loads of content so the first one on the list is a high elf and coming in at number 10 is heres so i think one of the reasons i really like her is that if you've got brogny being able to build that infinity team comp for ultra nightmare clan boss is one of the best team comps for clan boss and she just does so much damage um so she's bringing a speed aura for dungeons um she's got a passive that counterattacks whenever an ally is attacked and this is why she can do so much damage on clan boss just absolutely amazing uh she's got a cleanse on the a2 and she's also bringing increased speed for two turns very very nice and it's on a three turn cooldown and the a1 I didn't know she had this. Um, attacks one enemy, grants an extra turn if the target is killed. So of course we want to build her with like high damage. She hits hard, and then she can just pop off and pick off everyone one by one, just like Septimus can. But obviously at a rare level, but still really, really good champion. Solid. So next champion on the list is another rare, and I just want to point out when it comes to rares, high elves are just packing like all like so many like the best rares most of them are in high elves so coming in at number nine it's a reliquy tender and i just love her for doom tower i still use her for nether spider so she's got a single target revive on her a3 and it's a five turn cooldown it's not great but it's okay but what really stands out is it's just her a2 on a three turn cooldown it's a full cleanse and replacing continuous heal buff for two turns and yeah and for a void ep uh, sorry for a void rare that is a lot um her a1's just like pretty poor to be honest but it's just that cleanse that cleanse is so strong and it just makes her usable for so much content especially in like earlier stages in the game when you need like a cleanser she's your go to so number eight, it's a barbarian. It's a farmable barbarian. Can you guess who it is? Of course, it's War Maiden. She is one of my favorite champions. She's still one of my favorite champions. Just an absolute beast. Um, and for me, it's just all about this A3 and AOE drop defense. It is just so strong. As soon as you get this, you know, the game really picks up. You can you know speed well you can start to speed farm dungeons just such a good move and i think that that's like her best piece of kit again like what i like about it as well like obviously early game you want to have speed on her you want to have accuracy so she can land this debuff but then as you sort of progress you can go like full crit rate on her you can bring in like low like a you know attack percentage chest piece pitch damage gloves and she smacks really hard like she can just drop people in arena she can just clear waves she is just an all-round beast so coming in at number seven is another barbarian i don't know if this just makes me look lazy this is how i've done my tier list i just like go oh yeah they're in the same faction yeah yeah then they'll be the next one so soul bon boya boa boya boa um yeah one of the weirdest looking champions in the game not st it's like spray paint gold and stuff she just looks terrible but she does have an insane kit so she's bringing an increased crit rate in all battles by 12 percent can be useful if you need it um a3 attacks one enemy has an additional 25 chance of inflicting a critical hit and also has a 75 percent chance of depleting the target's term here. this is great for fire knight this is great for spider um, and it's great for secret rooms as well. But yeah, such, such a good ability. 
A2, attacks one enemy, has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Will ignore 75% of the target's defense. This is one of the reasons why she just slams and it just hits so hard. And then she's got an A1 that attacks one enemy and again has that 75% chance of inflicting a critical hit. So because of this, you only need to build her with 75% crit rate, which is great because in the early game, you're going to struggle to hit that crit cap. And I mean, if you want to be cheeky as well, you can get away with having even less if you use her aura as well. So yeah, I mean, ideally you want to put in Savage. If you don't have Savage, then it, obviously it's going to be like maybe speed and like a few pieces of um, offense. You do want to get some accuracy so we can push back turn meter. And when you sort of progress a bit further in the game, you can put in a stun set as well. Um, stun is just amazing on her A1. But yeah, so, such a good champion. Absolutely love her. Hey, coming in at number six, it's a demon spawn and it's one of my faves. And it's Fellhound. So Fellhound, um, he's like a campaign farmer. He can do it in six seconds. He's probably, well, he's one of the fastest at doing it, if not the fastest. Um, yeah, and you hopefully you get him on, you know, early on in the game. I remember like when you're farming with Kale and you've got those 30 second runs, it's painful. You drop down to six seconds. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, but I guess that's why I value him so much is just that, you know, it's a speed farming campaign. Just It just makes the game so much faster. And you can start to level up your champions a lot faster as well. And it's all about his A1. So his A1 attacks with enemies and has a 25. That doesn't really matter. But it's just the A1 is an AoE attack. He'll just keep doing that while you farm food on stage 12 3. And the damage is based on defense and attack. So he just needs, I think, speed wise, I think you just need to be over like 110 or over 120. As long as you're over that, you know, you can just put in like defense boots, attack percentage chest. Crit, crit damage gloves it doesn't really matter as long as you're stacking defense and attack he's gonna do insane damage for you in the rest of his kit's pretty nice as well a2 throwing out heals and um, reflect damage reflect damage can be useful for finite as well and then the a3 that does block damage as well so actually it has quite a lot going on in the kit but um yeah but mainly just a sick sick campaign farmer Ooh, number five. So number five is an Ogun tribe. Can you guess who it is? It's Belloa. So Belloa, again, another insane campaign farmer. Slightly slower than Fellhound. But the reason I give Belloa a little bit more credit is that you can build him a few different ways. Um, you can go full damage. You can go for control. Um, I like to go for a hybrid, so he's doing control and damage. Um, but yeah, so Campaign Farmer, again, just hits like a truck. Does AoE on every single um, ability. You even put him in a stun set as well. So A3 is bringing the weak version of decreased attack and decreased defense, but still pretty useful. Um, and then we've got um, decreased speed, the big boy version on the... No. I think, yeah, this is, sorry, this is the small boy version on the A2. And then A1, block active skills. I mean, you could just spam this by itself. Being able to lock people's skills out is so strong, especially for clearing waves. But yeah, again, just a great champion for progression, especially in the early game. Okay, so coming in at number four, it's an undead rare. Can you guys guess who it is? It's Frozen Banshee. So um, the reason that I give so much value to her is that, again, she's really, really good for clan boss. Um, I think for Ultra Nightmare, she does start to fall off, but you should be able to get maybe a two. No, it's more realistically, it's going to be a three key team, but you can get a three key team with a rare in it. That's really, really hard to do. Um, and yeah, she's bringing poison sensitivity. And then she's throwing out poisons as well. And the field to turn me of an ally uh, by, sorry, of, of all allies by 2% for each debuff on the target. I mean, 
it's pretty cool. She's got a lot in her kit. Um, and what I really like about her is she can solo dragon. So when you sort of get to that stage in the game where you can start to um, speed farm content, she can solo dragon. It really does speed things up for you. And she is so good at it. I'm sure, I'm sure you can do it in like one minute and 20 seconds. And that is insane. Hey. Next one is a Dark Elf. And it's none other than Painkeeper. And Painkeeper has really surged in value recently. Um, I mean, she's a huge part of loads of different unkillable um, team comps for Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. I mean, that is huge. That carries you so much in the game. But also just Iron Twins. Just being able to use her in Iron Twins and just free up loads of our champions is so good. And yeah, just such a good champion. And it's all because of being able to... Well, it's basically her A3, just being able to decrease the cooldown of an ally skill by one turn. It just opens up so much for you. And she's got some nice stuff on our kit as well. So like she's got a heal on the A2. A1 also fills her turn meter by 10%. And well, 20% because she's X twice. And because you're speeding up your turn meter, it just means that you can cycle around and just reduce those cooldowns even faster. So next on the list is a Knight Reverend. And of course, it has to be Renegade. Renegade, um, you know, for speed farming, um, it's just huge. She's like a baby Prince Kaimar, baby Yumiko. Um, but yeah, so it's on her A3 and it's on a five turn cooldown, but she decreases the uh, cooldown of all ally skills by two turns. This effect, yeah, basically you can't, you can't reset another Renegade or a Prince Kaimar with her. Um, but yeah, but, and then she, this champion will receive damage equal to 30% of their max HP. It doesn't really matter. And she can kill herself doing it as well. Good to know. Um, she's also got some useful stuff on her A2 as well. So can throw out a slow and decrease accuracy as well. And then on the A1 also can place um, heal reduction as well. But to be fair, it's more about the A3. Her A3, you know, it does just speed things up. So, you know, ideally you want her to be the slowest person on the team. And on the first wave, you don't want her to use the A3. So the rest of the team will just blow away that wave. Second wave comes, everyone does their abilities. Then she does the reset and then you're good to go. But yeah, she is just, just having that reset is just so strong. And again, she can be used for Ultra Nightmare for Clan Boss uh, Unkillable Team Comps as well. There are ones out there. There's one that I used to use with her as well. But yeah, just such great champion. And number one, can you guys guess who it is? It's a Dark Elf. Um, just She just has to be number one. It's none other than Cold Heart. I mean, where isn't she useful? Um... It's all about this A3 Heartseeker. Attacks one enemy, decreases the targets, turn meter by 100%, has an extra 30% chance of inflicting a critical hit. So again, you only need to build up with a 70% um, crit rate and damage is increased according to the enemy's max HP. So back in the day, I mean, she used to be just amazing for clearing dungeons. Um, like Fire Knight. I mean, she's still good for like normal and stuff. But then obviously, um, like on stage 25 and stuff, um, it's capped. So she doesn't do as much damage. And the same with hard. But people are just sneaking her in in all kinds of end game content, like Phantom Shogun, um, Iron Twins, um, Spider Hard 10, literally um Amos, the new boss, literally. People are squeezing her in literally everywhere. Apart from Arena, you can see she is just like god tier for almost all content. All right, we can take away um, obviously like Hydra, she's not going to be that great, and um, campaign and Arena stuff, but literally everywhere else in the game, she's carrying hard. And sorry, Joe, we just looked at A3. Actually, she's got some other stuff going on. Um, so A2, poison and decrease accuracy. And. She's got a heal reduction on the A1. And this is why 
He's so good for Amos. Um, you can build her a few different ways as well. Um, for like really end game content. Because this is um, capped, you don't have to go crazy with the crit damage anymore. You could put her in Savage. It helps increase damage. Um, but I would say like just hitting stats is probably more important. So you can go speed, perception, accuracy, crit damage. Um, and then, yeah. And then usually I like to, on the chest piece, you can go accuracy, depending. If you need loads and loads of accuracy, then yeah, accuracy on the chest and the banner. Um, otherwise, you could just go HP percentage on the chest piece and the gloves. going to give her loads of survivability. Um, and then accuracy on the banner. But it depends, it depends what you're doing. So I would say if you are using it for certain content, you need to check out specific builds for her. But yeah, really, really versatile. But yeah, she has to be number one. She is an absolute boss. Um, yeah, like literally just still usable. For so much end game content. Yeah. Just just she is number one. Please, please tell me I'm wrong in the comments below. I, I want to know who you think is number one. But anyway, that's pretty much the end of the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure to smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in the video soon. Peace.